I'm Dr. John and this is your Maintenance Minute. I received a request the other day from a subscriber asking, John, can you talk about critical spare parts? And if you know me, nothing gets my blood going, my blood boiling more than talking about storeroom related issues. Critical spare parts. It's my belief that we're probably thinking of critical spare parts in the wrong way. I believe that some of you are going to disagree with me. If that's the case, I'd love to hear from you. Let me give you my perspective right away. First of all, we think that, that is to say, some of you probably think that we call something a critical spare part. That means that we're all going to be concerned about it and we'll never not have it. It'll always be there when we need it. That's not the case. In fact, if you think that's what a critical spare part means, I'm here to tell you right now, that's really not what you're doing. Let me tell you my approach at Maintenance Innovators. When we go to an organization and we're called in to help restructure or lay out a world-class store room. The very first thing we do is create a store stock committee. This is a group of folks who are essentially the victims of the storeroom. We're going to put them on a committee and they're going to have some oversight and some say into how the storeroom is going to go from current state to world-class. The first thing I have the store stock committee do is define two things. What is a critical spare part and what is an obsolete spare part? These are two ends of a bell curve. Everything, you got critical on one end, obsolete on the other end. Everything else is in the middle. That sets the boundaries of what's going to be in our storeroom. Obviously, the obsolete stuff we want to get rid of, we have no use for it. Critical spare parts are not only things that you always want to have, and that's what we think is the, is the reason we call them critical. Critical spare parts are there because they meet some measurable criteria. The first one, probably the one that we're familiar with, is it impacts production. I'm here to tell you that is a very subjective term. Does it impact a little bit of production? Does it stop the entire plant? Does it close down the whole facility? Those kind of components that can close your entire facility, they're not production related. They're electrical distribution related. You lose the transformer, you lose the switch gear, the entire operation shuts down. Another measurable criteria besides interruption to production is it is a long lead time. Now that's a subjective term, right? Long lead time. If you got to hold your breath before you get it, 26 seconds can be a long time. We need to define what we mean by what we mean by long lead time. Another one is it's very expensive. Look, a part could cost $100,000. If you're a big corporation, a DuPont or somebody, $100,000 might be just the cost of doing business. If it costs me $100,000 to fix my car out there, I might be bankrupt. Again, those are subjective terms. <clears throat> Here's one criteria that fits a critical spare part that is always true, and it is absolutely not objective or subjective, I should say. It is a part you never want to use ever. If you have to pull that part out of the storeroom, it is an exceedingly and increasingly bad day. Imagine you have to pull out a critical spare part and to get a replacement is going to cost a lot of money and be a long lead time. And boy, you hope you don't ruin the one you just pulled out because it's going to dis, uh, disrupt production. There are other criteria. What we've done at, at Maintenance Innovators is we've reduced critical spare part. We've gotten the bias and the personal angst out of it. We've reduced it to a mathematical formula. I was going to say algebraic, but you don't have to solve for X in this. We're simply going to add some numbers and we predetermine at what value, what sum of all these different criteria that we are going to measure. I, I mean, you and I are going to measure. What is the value that has it arrive at being a critical spare part? And if it reaches that number, it is a critical spare part. If it does not reach that number, it is not. That doesn't mean that we don't stock it and make sure that we always have it. That's not what critical spare part means. In fact, let me give you a little litmus test to see if you would agree with me on this. We tend to call something a critical spare part in the storm because we never want to be without it. We've got to guard this thing with our life, essentially. Let's make sure that we take good care of it in the storm and we always have it just in case we need it. But at the same time, the exact same part that's in the production operation that's actually out being used in the facility, you can't distinguish it from any other part. It's being stood on, it's being beat on, it's covered with product, it's rusted, it's, it's not uh, PM'd very well, it's being abused out in production. I'm telling you, if it's a critical spare part in the storeroom, as I'm approaching the part in actual use, actually out in the facility, I should have to guard my eyes from the gleam, from the sheen coming off of it, because it is the shiniest thing out there. I should be stepping and walking on a prayer rug as I'm working my way up to the part. There should be incense burning off to the side, possibly an animal sacrifice over here. That's how important that part is out in the plant. If it's critical in the storeroom, it is uber vital in production. But I'm likely to find a critical spare part in the store and one that you call a critical spare part. We got to have this, John. We can't be without this. And I'm going to go out there to the part that you've got in production and it is worn out. It is beat down. 
it is not a critical spare part. You don't even care about it out in the plant. Why would you call it a critical spare part in here? Now, look, I'm not casting aspersions, but agree with me. That's probably the way it is, right? I'd also make this distinction about critical spare part. We can't be without it. You only have one critical, you only, I should say, you only have one spare part for your car, and it's a spare tire. But think of all the components that make your car do what a car does. Nobody here, unless you're a real gearhead, do you have an extra starter or a battery or a steering pump or brakes or anything else? You've got a spare tire. So don't tell me you need critical spare parts to make sure that we can keep this plant running. That's not what a critical spare part is. Look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come together in a non-biased, non-emotional way, and we're going to define mathematically what a critical spare part is. We're going to take the bias right out of it. It's got to meet this criteria and these 10 and 12 different elements weighted for our particular context of operation. If it reaches this number, it's automatically a critical spare part. If it doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're not going to stock it. If a part is a critical spare part, it meets all these gates. We've taken the subjectiveness right out of it. It meets these gates. If it's a critical spare part, it's stored in a different part of the storeroom it, under a different lock and key. If it's a critical spare part, we're going to look at it. We're going to count it. We're going to clean it every week, every month. We're going to be on top of it to preserve it and to guard it. The part that's actually, that part that's actually out in production, out in the operational environment, that's going to have the world's best preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance. The operators are going to care for it. It's going to be shiny. It's going to be the shiny object on the hill, as I was describing earlier, in jest. I can't call it a critical spare part here and not give two shakes about it out there in production. Folks, I'm here to tell you right now, in your storeroom, you create the store stock committee. They define what is a critical spare part mathematically. Here's what it means. We're going to add numbers. We're going to scrutinize parts. I want just a few parts to be critical spare parts. We're also going to define what an obsolete spare part is. We bring those two boundaries together. Everything else is in the middle. The store stock committee is the secret to that. They're the ones that own this definition. Don't let them off easy. The people now that are the victims of the store, let's bring them together, engage them, make them true stakeholders in the operation. Let's get this critical spare part and understand when I say critical spare part, here are the 12 things that I mean. There's no subjective to it. And by the way, you better have the world's best PMs out there and it better be the cleanest part on that machine. I'm Dr. John and this has been your Maintenance Minute.